Before Nicki Minaj be considered the most successful and influential female rapper of all time. Overall, you would have to put Nicki above Kim because you make the list today. Yeah. You, I mean, we would make that list today, so today Nicki is a little bit more influential than Lil' Kim, so you would have to put Nicki above, so I don't, I don't see anything well, wrong with that. Before Nicki Minaj would show the world she's not afraid of working with the rap game's biggest troll. And it made me realize I don't care anymore what anybody gotta say. I'ma do me. Before Nicki Minaj would receive numerous awards and accolades, including winning the BET Award for Best Female Hip Hop Artist for seven consecutive years, as well as ten Grammy nominations. Nicki Minaj, King Friday! It's turning out to be a great night for Nicki Minaj. She's been called the queen of hip hop and for good reason. It doesn't seem there is another female rapper as accomplished as Nicki Minaj at the time of this recording. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not so sure anyone will ever be able to reach the heights she's managed to reach over the course of her career. From world tours to films, she's also got the cosmetics from lipstick to fragrances, and we can't forget that she's also a part owner of Tidal. After collaborations with 6 9 and Doja Cat, with the latter getting the women their first number one on the Billboard Hot 100 songs chart, it seems Nicki is simply setting herself up for another decade of success. However, all the success, fame, and fortune would come at a price, as Nicki certainly didn't have any handouts and had to go through some tougher times before she would have an estimated net worth allegedly between. Between 80 to 100 million. Damn! What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Before They Were Famous. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and today we're documenting the life and career of the one and only Nicki Minaj before fame. As always, let us know who we should cover next in the comment section down below, but for now, let's get right into it. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Nicki Minaj was born Onika Tanya Mirage on December 8, 1982, in St. James, Trinidad and Tobago. Her father, Robert Mirage, is of Indo Trinidadian and Afro Trinidadian origins, while her mother, Carol Mirage, is of Afro Trinidadian descent. Nicki has a younger brother, Micaiah, and younger sister, Ming, as well as an older brother, Jelani, and a half brother, Brandon Lamar. If you know the situation regarding Nicki's oldest brother, Jelani, well, Let's just say he's likely spending the rest of his life in jail and it's for his involvement with a minor. But we gotta get back to Nikki. In hopes of offering the children a better life, Nikki's parents moved to the United States, with her mother enrolling at Monroe College and her father getting a job at American Express, while Nikki and her siblings would stay with their grandmother. This led to her spending some of her youth in the port of Spain, and it seems their culture certainly had an influence on a young Nikki. Although her parents would eventually land jobs, money was still tight, which led to the family living in the neighborhood of Southside Jamaica in Queens, New York. Nikki and her older brother would start calling Queens home when she was just five years old, but unfortunately for Nikki, things would go from bad to worse. Her father was struggling with a drug addiction and would sell some of the family's furniture for drug money at times. Although her mother would work as a nurse's aide, it was tough for the family to have a stable income. As Robert's addiction got worse, he started being abusive towards Nikki's mother and even once tried to burn her house down. Thankfully, Nikki and her brother wouldn't be home at the time, as her mother would actually have a dream the night before that this was going to happen and told him to stay with their friends that night. I was so scared, I didn't know what happened, but everybody was running over here and I just looked. My house was gone. The house was gone. All of my toys, all of my clothes, all of my memories. With Robert's addiction and abuse, Nikki, her brother, and mother would live in fear, with holes constantly being punched in walls, the cops making regular appearances, and Nikki locking herself in her room. As a way of coping with the traumatic situation, Nikki would express herself artistically, pretending to be other people. Before she was Barbie, she was known as Cookie, telling New York Magazine in 2010, I quote, To get away from all their fighting, I would imagine being a new person. Cookie was my first identity that stayed with me for a while. I went on to Harajuku Barbie, and then Nicki Minaj. Fantasy was my reality. I must have been such an effing annoying little girl. Everywhere we went, I was up singing or acting like, hey, look at me. Eventually, her father would get clean and the family has a great relationship, but that didn't happen overnight. Seeing her mother struggle and growing up close to God, Nikki would pray that one day she'd be able to take care of her. But at just five years old, there isn't much you could do but keep the faith. In regards to education, Nikki would attend Clarence Witherspoon Public School for elementary, where she would play clarinet and sing in the choir. At just 12 years old, she would write her first rap, and with ambitions of performing, would attend Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts for her high school years. Each student had to choose a specific field of study with the options of dance, drama, art, vocal music, instrumental music, and technical theater. With hopes of being the next Monica, which is one of Nikki's biggest idols, she auditioned for the vocal music program. Unfortunately, Nikki failed her singing audition and ended up in the drama program. Call Ledger right now and tell him I can have my baby back. I am not gonna argue. Call him. Here, the intense training gets the better of this young actress. At just 15, she would have an abortion, telling Rolling Stone in 2014, I quote, I thought I was going to die. I was a teenager. It was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through. It'd be contradictory if I said I wasn't pro-choice. I wasn't ready. I didn't have anything to offer a child. 
Being in the drama program, Nikki started to grow fond of some of the industry's best, such as the one and only Meryl Streep. However, she also cites Jada Pinkett Smith as inspiration regarding acting, and has claimed Jay Z, Foxy Brown, Lil Wayne, Madonna, Beyonce, Kanye, and many other artists inspiring her musically. After graduating from high school, she would land herself a role in the off Broadway play In Case You Forget back in 2001. However, it seems Nikki really wasn't all that passionate about acting, she was more focused on writing. I studied drama. Okay, so what, uh, what type of acting did you, were you doing with that? Mostly stage. Um, Anything I might have seen? No, no. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I did like an off off Broadway play at one time too after school, but it wasn't nothing. It wasn't. I think that at that time I wasn't focused enough to, to maintain a, an acting career. I didn't realize you had to really be focused, like going on those auditions and stuff like that for agents. And I, I wasn't there yet. I was too all over the place. Now, as we know, the entertainment business is a tough industry to break into. It usually leads to people working various different jobs, and Nikki was no exception. It seems she actually had a total of about 15 jobs before she decided she was destined to entertain. Telling Billboard back in 2010, the last job I had was an office manager in a little tiny room where I literally wanted to strangle this guy because he was so loud and obnoxious. I would go home with stress pains in my neck and my back. That's when I went to my mother and said, look, I'm not going back to work. I'd been fired like 15 times because I had a horrible attitude. Apparently there was even once an incident where Nikki chased a customer while working at Red Lobster for stealing her pen. <laughs> Nikki knew the 9 to 5 life wasn't for her. For a short period of time, she would sign with the Brooklyn group full force, leading her to be a part of the quartet group known as the Hood Star. The group was made up of Minaj, Lou Star, 7up, and a guy named Scaff Beezy, whose real name is Safari Samuels. From this point on, Nikki was 100% committed to her craft, but wasn't going to let anyone take away from her artistic integrity. After leaving the group, she would start uploading her work to MySpace. It was safe to play ya. Hit him with the NIC, the K ya. I'm Tinker Bell, he's Peter Pay ya. To these web. I'm Mother Maya. Around this time, she'd also start dating Samuels, who, as we all know, she would be on and off with until about 2014. Their relationship was quite interesting, with him eventually turning into more of a hype man for Nikki than anything. The team would push for Nikki's success as she would continue uploading to MySpace, while sharing the links with anyone who was willing to listen. Fortunately for her, CEO of Dirty Money, Fendi, caught wind of Nikki's sound and saw a real opportunity. But this wasn't by chance, as Nikki explained, I quote, I was coaxed into starting a MySpace page and began sending out friend requests to some insiders in the music business. Is. Fendi happened to be a person I sent a request to. He hit me up and began relentlessly pursuing me. He asked for a trial period to prove himself. The rest is history. However, he requested she make one change going from Nicki Mirage to Minaj. According to the Queen herself, I quote, My real name is Mirage. Fendi flipped it when he met me because I had such a nasty flow. I eat. She signed a 180 day contract with Dirty Money in 2007. Her first mixtape dropped in June of that year titled Playtime Is Over. Shortly after, she would get the attention of one of the best MCs in the rap game. Like I said, he saw me on a DVD. He said, I got to have that girl shout it. Hey, yo, shout it. Y'all wanna meet Nicki, shout it. <laughs> and he met me. Who doesn't take a flight when, when, when we see a baby's on the phone? On the heels of breaking through to the big times, Nikki would drop Sucka Free in 2008, which is the same year she would be named Female Artist of the Year at the 2008 Underground Music Awards. In 2009, she'd drop Beam Me Up Scotty collaborating with Lil Wayne, and in August of that year, Nikki would officially sign to Lil Wayne's Young Money label, becoming its first ever female artist. Jumping on tracks such as Bedrock, which also features a very young Drake and Tyga, and a remix of Five Star by Yo Gotti, it wouldn't be long until the mainstream really started vibing with Nikki's sound. In April of 2010, she released her first single, Massive Attack, which was supposed to be the lead single for her debut album, Pink Friday. However, after it received a fairly poor reception, Nikki and her team decided to drop Your Love. After peaking at 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number one on the Billboard Rap Songs chart, Nikki would release a few more singles before dropping her debut album. Pink Friday would officially drop on November 22, 2010, debuting at number two on the Billboard Hot 200 and receiving generally positive feedback. Great tradition of Black Friday. We are going to switch it up this year in honor of the Nicki Minaj album and call that day Pink Friday and call my album Pink Friday. 
As we know, Nicki would go on to win numerous awards, get herself into a handful of feuds, drop an insane amount of music, and showcase to the world her many different characters. From Roman to Barbie, Chun Li, and all those in between, it'll be interesting to see what else Nicki comes up with down the road. Most recently, she's been working with 6ix9ine on the song Trolls, had her first number one with the remix of Say So, and as recently as October 2019, got married to her childhood friend, Kenneth Zupetti. There's also a lot of information that's happened between now and her first album drop, but this is before they were famous, so I think we'll wrap it up on that note. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. Let us know who we should cover next, and we'll see you guys in the next one.